Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we are looking at a Star Ace Campaign Master screen. This is from Pacesetter Games from 1984. It also features Ace in the Hole, which should be a short adventure. So this one is still sealed. The packaging is coming off a little bit here. Um, but yeah, let's open this up and see how it compares to other screens. Now, Pace Setter put out a couple of games like Time Master and Star Ace. Uh, Star Ace actually had a pretty good following. Uh, Time Master, I didn't really know anyone that played it, but it was an early uh, time travel game, and those were really hard to pull off. Star Ace was an early space game, and those were also kind of hard to pull off. And this one had to compete with, like, Star, Fr uh, was it? Yes, yeah, Star Frontiers and like uh, Metamorphosis Alpha and stuff like that. So this one had a strong following, but it was a very loyal core kind of thing. It wasn't ever really huge. But Pacesetter was putting out products. So let's see what we've got here and uh, take what's left of this plastic off. So here's the ace in the hole, a very simplistic little adventure like you'd find. Uh, staples are really rusty, they didn't hold up well, oxidation no doubt. It's only eight pages long, so it's a pretty short adventure, or it's designed to be short. Every game master knows how players like to make things much more complicated than necessary. So we got lots of symbols and little tick boxes here. Don't write it in your books, kids. It's rude. Action tables. Um, this one was definitely more of a charts kind of game. Uh, oh, there's a character sheet. That's pretty nice to have. Blank character sheet in there. So, let's see. Does it give you permission? Yep. May re be reproduced for personal use in playing the Star Ace game. So, you get permission to photocopy it. Uh, and there's a couple character sheets. You can see the rusty staples really coming through here. But each character sheet has the action table on the back. So there's actually quite a bit of that. And then those are just kind of in the middle of the adventure. They don't really count toward the page count. So, um, yeah, it's a it looks like a fun little brief adventure. Nothing fancy, but just something to give you an introductory adventure for the game master to run you through. So everybody can kind of get used to the rules. So here's the front of the screen. And here's the middle. And then on the back is more chart. This is how a lot of game screens were laid out back then. So it's only a three-fold. And inside we've got a bunch of different maneuver charts and references like you'd expect. And you would need uh, these more complicated dice-oriented games. Um... Uh, these had a lot of charts and references and color coordination and all that nonsense. Like, if this was the Marvel Super Heroes game, uh, the color co chart just drove me nuts. This was D100, so you'd have to cross-reference it with your your attack margin, and that could be all the way over here, and you got color coding, and yeah, it just becomes a giant pain. So, lots of charting. But nice, interesting star border. I dig that. That's a cute addition. It doesn't interfere with any of the words, so it's functional in that regard. The trifold screens were kind of garbage, though, because when you had it folded out, most of the time the players were looking at this part because that's what's directly in front of the screen when it sits up. So that's boring. The person off to your left got to look at some art. The person on the right got to read the chart. But it's, it's tall, I like the so, the height because it keeps people from looking over the screens. The shorter ones, people, it, taller people can cheat and look over your screen. But this is more, almost 8.5 by 11, I think it's slightly taller than that actually. Um, and I like, I like that because I like the taller screens, but the trifolds, they didn't sit up real well. And you couldn't fit a lot behind them. So you could fit one or two books, usually you'd have to get two screens and paper clip them together so that you had a six fold screen so you could get all your books behind it but yeah overall it's clean easy to read not a lot going on uh, uh, most people don't like that 
there's charts on a side that they can't look at so you'd have to flip it shut so you have to move everything or have a copy of this you know from the book or whatever oh, marked in the book so you could reference it quickly um, these were just card stock screens you can't really see it but there's some denting here um, so that happened a lot these would get stained a lot because usually if you're eating or something while you're playing they're gonna get covered in grease or Cheeto dust or Doritos or whatever pop stains that sort of thing uh, but it has held up well the colors still pretty good this middle area is a little faded but this isn't bad uh, the adventure didn't hold up as well the staples are rusty um, so that's affected the edges on the inside as well as the outside and that's from oxidation and you can see where the staples were resting in the screen so that's a little disappointing but it's pretty much what the standard was at the time in the 80s trifolds were just about all you could get until the 90s so yeah as far as the time frame goes it's it's okay but it's nothing fancy but most of them weren't so it's actually fairly average I don't like that the center of the image is the back of it, so that that's a little lazy on the design aspect. So yeah, it could have used better imagery. Overall, it's it's okay, it's functional, but it's really not ideal. So yeah, that's the Star Ace Campaign Master screen with the Adventure Ace in the hole. If you're buying this, remember to look to make sure the adventure is included, um, because that's a big part of the collectability of it. And it is an introductory adventure, so it's actually really useful. But that'll do it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. And we hope to see you on the next episode of What's Inside.